void do shoot. And what this is going to do is it's going to transmit well, I was going to say the angle of the turret but from a visual sense we really want that to be to be synced. But I think just to make sure that everything is 100% together, we're going to want to do um, we're going to want the do shoot to include the the total ultimate position of everything. I guess I'll call this fire bullet. Command fire bullet. And what we're going to send is the bullet's position. Um, and I guess the velocity. So the command runs on the server to do make sure the position and velocity are legal. So the server is going to be trying to compare this with where it knows the tank is and make sure the velocity doesn't ex in, uh, exclude um, limits in both maybe direction and total speed, for example. All right? So we'll check on that. You know, the server is going to make sure you didn't just tell it to like do something ridiculous like teleport the bullet above someone's head and shoot straight down, as an example. So assuming that that's true, then what we're going to do is we're now going to um, create the bullet for the clients. So the tank has some sort of bullet prefab. It's probably going to be something like active weapon. Like it might have a whole um, array of available bullets, you know, for all your different weapon types. Um, like there's, there's all kinds of different things that can happen with something like that. But ultimately there's going to be an bullet for whatever the mechanic is. So well, game object, current bullet prefab, right? We're, in, we're implying that there might be some sort of variations to this available because we might have multiple different weapons, but this is the one that's currently loaded. And this is the one we're going to spawn when we shoot a bullet done. And really what we're going to do is right now is we're just going to hard code it through the inspector. In fact, let me do that now before I forget. So my tank, compile, uh, the tank script, it's not set to public, public. There you go. And we're just going to drop the bullet in there. The normal, the quote unquote normal bullet goes in there. Awesome. When you fire, will you be able to control the force applied to the bullet? That is the idea. I mean, the classic thing in this game is, um, yeah, you're you're going to finish your move, and then you're going to turn your turret to a certain angle, and then you're going to load up a certain amount of power and fire, and that's going to resolve um, what the shot is. Could be mouse controlled. There's lots of different ways you could you can do the UI. You could literally just have some sliders in your window. We don't know what the user interface will be. In fact, we might offer all of those options. You can choose whether you're using your arrow keys or whether you're using sliders on the screen or some sort of like just mouse interface where you sort of like point, like you put your mouse somewhere and the turret just follows it and then you click the button and you release at a certain power. Or maybe you can type in specific things. I want 46.5 at a force of 17. Point three. I don't know. And the code here isn't going to change at all. That's the kind of neat thing about it, is the actual sort of like shooting code, all it's going to know is, I guess, some sort of value. Here, we'll put this in here. Uh, float turret, turret, turret angle, and float turret power. These values are somehow going to be... Um, punched into the system. Here, we'll have it start at uh, 45 and at a power of 10 as a default thing. And we're going to have some sort of interface for, for tuning those values. Right now, we're just going to shoot at that every time. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to fire this. So it's we're somehow on the server going to get a bullet position and velocity. So we are going to create a game object, which is going to be the bullet. So we're going to instantiate the uh, bullet prefab. 
which was set somehow before. And, I mean, we could also pass this here, but we're, we don't know how that's going to be set. We don't know how many weapons people are going to have or how they actually select it. All we know is, at some point, current bullet prefab is going to be set to some sort of bullet. Okay, so we're going to instantiate that. And this thing has a rigid body 2D. Get component rigid body 2D. And what we want to do is uh, we need to set the position, which we can set through the transform or through the position or through the uh, the prefab here. Uh, position is going to be gotten from the bullet position and rb.velocity um, is going to be gotten from that, which actually I suppose we could just pass a 2D. Now a 2D, a 3, vector 3 can be cast to a vector 2, but we may as well just send the vector 2 in the first place because it'll need less bandwidth to send that. So bullet position and velocity there. And then we're going to spawn this on the network. So network server dot spawn and we're going to pass the game object over here so assuming we've done that oh we should also set the rotation to match the velocity can we set the rotation from here we can because it's just another way to access the transform 2d so rotation are you a float in this example yes you're a float so you want an angle and the angle is gonna be math f dot eight i'm gonna screw this up the first time velocity and i think it's sort of inverted from what i'd normally type so i think it's a y velocity dot x and this is in radian so you got to multiply this by math f dot rad to degree and then the question is, is the bullet current facing, is it correct? Or do we have to like end up rotating it by 90 degrees or something like that, which is a good chance. There's no way I wrote that right. Let's find out. <laughs> okay. So, da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da. Uh, we still need to actually shoot the bullet. So, um, if input.get key up spacebar. So we're gonna shoot. So we're gonna say command fire bullet um, with the position equal to, really it's gonna be the turret's position. Uh, we don't know what that will be yet. So let's just use our own position. Transform, transform dot position. And the velocity is going to be is going to be um, the vector two with um so new vector two where the i don't know x is the turret power and the y is zero and then we want to rotate this use quaternion math i mean i guess i can just use like sines and cosines over here that's probably the best way to do it Wow, um, where am I? Over here. S turret power times mathf dot sine, and it wants it in radians. We're going to keep swapping between radians and whatever, uh, which I guess is fun. Actually, yeah, this one will want to be cosine, I think. Turret angle. Should I just store angle as radians? I like work, working degrees, but I do also know the benefit of radians. So degrees to radian. And then again, I bet you there's just another way to give it like a velocity and an angle when you create your vector two. Is there just like a current constructor of a vector two like that? Because wouldn't that be swell? No. I guess it wouldn't be able to differentiate anyway. Anything in the chat? Nope. What's our vector, Victor? <laughs> roger, roger. Uh, who dat? It's Zervin! Hey, thank you, Zervin! Thank you for all the years of entertainment. I hope that these tanks do not cause another seven-year war and the loss of New France. <laughs> oh, thanks, Zervin. I appreciate that. And, uh, and, man, I've just been thinking about tanks so much because I've been playing um, uh, 
Hearts of Iron 4 in preparation for the uh, Waking the Tiger. Really looking forward to it. So, we're going to pass this velocity. And so, ignoring the fact that I've probably made 30 different errors in here, let's see what happens. Hit play. When I hit spacebar, we're going to send a message to the server, which happens to also be ourselves, to spawn a bullet with a certain speed. Um, there's that little blink of the, the wrong position for a second, and that's only happening. I mean, there's, again, many things wrong, but it's only happening because... When we spawn it, we should actually give it the position here. Position, um, and it will want a rotation as a quaternion here. Float angle. And that angle will be a quaternion dot Euler. Yeah, Euler. Um, and it's rotation through the Z axis in this case. So there we go. We'll feed the position is when we instantiate it. And that should get rid of that little blink when we spawn the bullet. Now, it's still, it might be doing some weird collision stuff and things, which is why it's ending up moving in a weird location. Okay. Oh, right, I got rid of the velocity. Like, why isn't it moving at all anymore? All right, okay. So now it's going to spawn in the right place, and it's going to be turned, in theory, the correct way, which we have set to 45 degrees. That doesn't look like it's spawning at 45 degrees, though. Turret angle. Um, almost certainly I'm screwing up some of this math over here. Mm -hmm. 7.17.1. That is... That is 45 degrees headed upwards. Is it not powerful enough to overwhelm gravity? First of all, let's turn off the mass. Because it's going to confirm. Oh, no, sorry, not turn off the mass. Turn off the gravity scale. It's colliding. That's what's happening. It's colliding with the tank. Ha ha! So, because it's being sort of ejected from the tank and it's losing from its position. How do we get it to not collide with its own player on departure? Sort of need a one sided collider. And we could have it spawn outside the hitbox. We could have the tank's own hitbox become a... Oh, we should just use triggers from the start. That's right. Tanks should not actually have true colliders. They should just be triggers. That's much better. Is trigger. Excellent. Herpa derp. So there's not an actual physics collision that's going to happen to the tank, but when the bullet enters a tank's hitbox... It will trigger the on trigger, and then we can check. Uh, is, is, is this for myself? We can also, like, I think it's okay to shoot yourself somehow. But we'll probably, we'll either have some sort of, um, um, like, wormhead, warhead, um, 
arming delay or we'll wait until you've left the hitbox once. Like the first time you enter it, we're going to ignore it because it'll probably be the initial spawn. And then the second time we'll we'll have it do it or we'll make sure it, you know, if it's left a certain distance and come back or, you know, some sort of thing like that. So, because we don't want it to self-collide. So right now it is spawning from the center of the tank. The direction is good. Let's go and re-enable gravity on this bullet by setting the gravity scale back to, I don't know, sure, one. You can really mess with the, uh, the things to get the physics to look right. Whether or not that means being right. Okay, so that's good and it is arcing. Now, what we're probably going to want to do, that we don't do right now, is have the bullet's rotation change as it moves. So, because this should always be facing forward, right? Exactly. So, one of the things we're going to do in our update over here, our generic update... Oh, uh, not here, sorry, in our bullet code. In our bullet code... Make sure we're pointing into our um, direction of travel. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab a rigid body, rigid body 2D, RB, get a reference to it, get component, rigid body 2D. Thank you very much. So RB.velocity, RB.velocity is setting our angle. And then we can set our, um, with our transform 2D, we can just feed an angle, right? Get component transform 2D dot, ooh. oh, it's rectangle. And we have a rectangle if we're a sprite, right? I don't know. <laughs> we're just going to change the rotation to meet the uh, the angle. So we'll do the same thing where we do... Uh, and this rotation is... That's just the float, right. So we want to feed in the angle that way. And that is in degrees. So and this will run on you know every client, every server. We'll keep it facing the same way, which should be fine. Technically, you can change some of the hitbox, but again... The, the clients are going to mostly ignore that hitbox behavior. So now, hey, there we go. Look at how lovely that is. And that update will run on everyone. And it's mostly just a visual update. And again, it's going to be fairly deterministic. Looks good. And yeah, so for here, we're going to want void, void on trigger enter 2D with a lowercase d. He says an increasingly high voice, betraying his lack of confidence. Uppercase D. Damn it. And we get a collider 2D. We have collider 2D. Collider. Collided with something. Um, is this our own tank? And should we detonate? So then if we get here, detonate and hurt everything, including the source tank within our radius. So we're going to need a few values. We're going to be wrapping this up in just a second here. Um, we're not going to actually handle the damage routine in this particular video uh, because I've been going for two and a half hours. My brain's getting a little mushy. Maybe yours are as well. And this shooting thing is going to be a nice solo topic on its own. But we'll have some sort of public float radius where the radius should be whatever. It's really going to depend on the type of bullet. But even normal bullets here in this game are going to have some AOE. It'll be fairly small. So, this this much whatever that much is um i mean we could actually take a look at the grid and figure out what these unit means and things it's probably actually gonna be quite large because i don't think we're our units are very big um in here but it's gonna have some some radius um and probably gonna have some damage amount um 10 and it might have like public bool 
damage falls off, which is maybe set to true by default. So like the further away you are from the source of the explosion, the less damage you take. For some weapons, that's probably going to be true. For some, that's not going to be true. Um, and then probably some sort of like public uh, game object um, source tank. The tank that fired the shot. Because, hey, if nothing else, we want to keep score and things. Like, we might keep... Uh, here we might load up the source tank and also the um, the player or something. I, I don't know. But, you know, some sort of stuff like that. <laughs> you know the code's getting good when comments start to resemble extension... Extension... Yes, extensionalists. Um, is this our own tank? Should we detonate? Is that the sort of reference there? Extensionalism? I can't say that word! Extensionalism. No, I guess I was saying it right. It just sounds wrong. Hmm. Maybe I'm putting the emphasis on the wrong syllable. Da, 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 da. See, then the thing is, only the uh, server needs this information, which is good, because by default, this stuff is not going to get actually synced. I mean, so on the individual clients, they're always going to have maybe these, like, default values. I mean, maybe we'll update them, maybe we won't, you know, just so that it can, like, render the explosion more natively. But I don't think so. I, th I don't think this stuff is going to get synced from the server to the client, you know, including the source tank. Because mostly it comes down to here is, first, if is server, oh, which we don't have because this is not a network object. So using unity engine dot networking, boom. And we want a network behavior like that. So we want to say, hey, if is server is equal to false, then we just return. Only the server resolves explosions. And the other thing we'll probably want to do in the update over here is... Something like check for ground collisions since that's not handled by the physics engine. I mean, right now it could be because our ground plane is just a flat line and therefore um, we could put a box collider around that or something. Um, so right now it could be, but later on if we're doing the like sort of falling pixel type of ground implementation... That's not something the physics server is gonna, physics engine is gonna handle for us. We'll be doing some other check, basically something like uh, if the x coordinate pixel that I'm about to enter has a piece of ground in it, then we're gonna do something. So we'll probably have to do some stuff like pixel perfect thing, where like each unit is one pixel. We'll probably work on something like that later on, but. Do, 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 bum, 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 even more omnipotent. Why are we omnipotent? Do, 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 do. Uh, maybe completely mistaken, but will a simple arctan work for all directions correctly? Um, I, I can tell you that this version does properly grab the case where if x is equal to zero, um, the default math for this is would lead to a de, uh, uh, divide by zero, but it checks for that and returns an appropriate angle. So I think it's okay. Probably make an invisible box next to the turret, spawn the bullet here, probably save some trouble. Um, yeah, well, that's what I normally do. Usually what we do is in fact, and that's what we will be doing, because right now we're just spawning the bullet where the tank is, but what we're going to want to do is bring in the tank Zoom this way out for that, which is kind of a little annoying. And under here, under the game object for the turret, we're going to want another empty. And this empty is absolutely going to be the point where we launch bullets from. So this is the um, muzzle, I know, bullet spawn point is what I like to do. Um, and so now this will this will rotate with the uh, the root object here. So if we go up there, we check the bullet spawn point. It's still at the tip, just the tip. 
And then what we're going to want to do is tell the tank um, public transform um, bullet spawn point. And that's going to be used as the position. Now, we could really use the rotation of this to determine the rotation of the launching of the bullet as well. Barrel's longer, you want to... Yeah, I mean, there's stuff like that, but even then, like, if the bullet's lo the barrel's longer, you won't have the problem triggering your own tank. But we might want barrels at different lengths. The hitbox might change for a million different reasons. The, the right thing is definitely to have some sort of logic to make sure that... Um, the the collision is correct for cases like where you know the hitbox on the bullet becomes a little bit larger so you're shooting straight forward and but for really even reason the the hitbox of the bullet wants to be larger than normal for this particular bullet because that's the way it works and then it clips the end of the thing and then you're constantly adjusting hitboxes no terrible B bad idea it never works out right there's always going to be some case where it clips your your own player in an inappropriate fashion that doesn't feel right so it's better to have a little bit of scripting logic to make it look more correct like from the player point of view i mean obviously if the physics were just right then you know you you just make sure the turret i mean doesn't actually fire the bullet into the, the thing itself but you tend to often use slightly more generous hitboxes in games for a variety of reasons or sometimes smaller hitboxes depending on what you're trying to do anyway um so and we are going to wrap this up in a second but we're going to put the bullet spawn point right in there apply the prefab change do this and over here uh what are we doing right when we're shooting um, the position is going to be the bullet spawn point dot position, like that instead, with some sort of velocity. Bum, bum, bum. Although, see, I'm sending it here. We don't necessarily have to send the position, because really the server should know where the turret position is. Now, the velocity is going to be based on the, the angle and the power, and I mean... The angle will probably want to sync just because it's a visual thing, but there's no reason we ever have to tell the server or any other client what our turret power is, because that's just an internal value. I mean, the server has to make sure that this velocity is legal, but other than that, we don't actually have to, like, every time we change the velocity, let the people know. Unless, you know, in the multiplayer scenario, we actually want to let all the players see what our power rating is, because maybe it's interesting to see some people fiddle with that value. So, I don't know. Anyway, the point is, we don't actually have to send this position but maybe, you know, you know, the server, because the server is also a client, on the client side, it might still be adjusting position in some sort of visual way. We want to make sure that it's spawned, I don't know, six and one, half dozen to the other. So we are going to wrap this up here. Let me just take another shot and make sure that it actually syncs properly. Oh, and we should make sure that it works on the network too. We didn't actually check that. So I just want to make sure it comes out of the nozzle right. It is, right, but it's not, it's still, it's still forced at a 45 degree angle, so it's coming out of the, uh, the tip of the, cunt, the gun here, and we might want to adjust, like, the bullet's, like, spawn point to, like, be further out instead of overlapping at all, but yeah, it's always stuck at a 45 degree angle, because that's what we have it right now, because we don't have any controls, but that's okay. So, let's do a build, and make sure we can check. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Good play. And what I'll do, I'll do a run where um, the, the standalone build is the host, as opposed to the server. So we're going to client, so I can move over here. I can, in fact, not shoot. Oh. I do. Yes, Windows. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. 
I didn't add to the list of spawnables. That's why it's important to switch from thing to thing. The bullets are not in the list of spawnable objects. So the, the things on the network don't know when you say, like, spawn object 3. Well, there's no object 3. What are you talking about? Okay, let's try that again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like it when I make mistakes that I know are coming, and then every now and again I make one where I'm like, whoa, hold on. I did not see this coming. Like, is it a code problem? I didn't think so. Because normally, you, or you don't always expect the problem, but as soon as it happens, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's what I forgot. And here I was like, uh, that should have worked. So we're going to host from here. We're going to climb over here. I'm going to move here and shoot. There we go. And I'm going to move that there. I'm going to shoot over here and confirm. Yeah, I can see it on the client side. Excellent. There you go. And I mean, in theory, I could move in such a way. Ha <laughs> ha, gotcha. I don't think we're, we're doing any messages when there's a collision, but. Boo, 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 boo. Die, punk. All right, yeah, we're going to wrap this up here. I think we did a lot of great work today. Um, getting the collisions to work and do damage is going to be fine. Next time, the bigger project is probably going to be setting up, um, well, setting up the lobby. And if we're going to do turn-based kind of stuff, then, you know, that'll be a little bit of extra mechanic put it in there. Although, right now, there's something to be said about the real-time tanky game. It's actually kind of awesome. <laughs> uh, the tank treads show up in top and compiled? Really? Does it? But they have sorting layers. No, that's not true. The uh, threads and the uh, body are both on the same layer. So depending on slightly different internal spawning orders, they're going to be slightly different. Yeah, we'll probably want to give them um, their own sorting layer. Uh... Uh, tank, is it treads or threads? Treads, right? Probably. Man, I don't know. So we'll put that, um, to spawn below. I mean, it's above here, but spawning, f or rendering first. I could have just written tracks. I probably should have just written tracks. There we go. So it'll explicitly be below. Good call for sorting error, not layer. Oh, order in layer. You're right. I could have just done that instead of having it as a separate sorting layer. That's true, because we can have that. That's probably what I should have done. Well, yes, no, maybe so. All right. We're good. Whew. Rolly things. <laughs> uh, treads is good. Tracks are left on the ground. <laughs> That's true. So, yes, we're going we're gonna to do that. My brain is pretty much where we are going to hit that limit. I'm going to take a short break. We're going to come back. We're going to play some Slay the Spire. We're going to continue the run from uh, from Wednesday. It's cool making the next World of Tank Killer. Maybe. <laughs> and yes, these VODs will show up on YouTube.com slash Quill18Creates. Do make sure to go over there and subscribe if you do want to see some more programming content. And if you do want to see lots more programming content, please uh, support the channel over at uh, Patreon.com slash Quill18Creates. Uh, the video game videos pay the bills. The programming videos are a lot of work and don't get that many views. So they really need the Patreon to keep that thing uh, going strong. And uh, people have been really amazing about it. So thank you for that. And yeah, so I'm going to take a short break. I'm going to go pee. And I might get a snack. I'm a little, I'm a little peckish. I don't know. And we're going to come play some Slay the Spire. So I will be back in a few. Thank you to all the January Patreon supporters and these Mic Check supporters. Uh, Yukofin, Lurking Ninja, Dubiusur Curl, Tiburon, Mighty Mix, Pavels Danoff, Adam Keenan, Michael McClintock, Aaron Dobson, Rarskal, Gurko Dries, Jesper Bisgard, Julien Gelafon, Soren Tried Anderson, Marisfield Vold, Speedy Savant, Steven Steger, Thomas Oberson, Jason Yanity, 
Easter Egg Productions, Neil Blakey, Milner, and everyone who watched, shared, favorited, and subscribed. Thank you so very much.